If you've been struggling to beat literally anything in Destiny as of late, then you're in luck. Because I have a build that will incinerate those woes in glorious fashion. In a recent dream of mine, it was revealed to me that there exists a Titan build that is not only absurdly strong with ridiculous damage, unkillable levels of healing, and delicious fashion, but will also have you quite literally laughing maniacally as you slam dunk two hammers on top of the skulls, of anything that gets in your way. But first, I want to thank you for watching this video by giving away three Star Splash Emblem codes. And I'll tell you how to enter right after I tell you about this video's sponsor, a game that you can cozy up on the couch with during this winter season, is playable on both mobile and PC, and has over eight hundred incredible champions. So if that sounds fun, then join me in the adventure that is Raid Shadow Legends. The worlds of Raid Shadow Legends and Monster Hunter are colliding in an amazing limited time crossover. From now until March 5th, players can collect five Monster Hunter themed legendary champions, Rathalos, Xynagray, Alatrion, Fatalus, and Ruiner Nur Giganti. Everyone can get the Rathalos Blademaster legendary champion for free simply by logging into Raid for seven days between now and March 5th, and can get the other four Monster Hunter themed champions via special in-game events. Players can also enjoy the Cursed City, one of Raid's biggest features since the Doom Tower, with 100 stages to complete, including stages where you need to take down two of Raid's bosses at the same time. So be sure to click my link in the description or scan my QR code on screen to get insane bonuses only available through my link, like 500,000 silver, energy, and chicken. Once you're in, come find me under the name Mactix and join my clan Celestial Nighthawk so we can be legends together. And to enter in to win the Star Splash Emblems, simply like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment below what exotic you want to see in the next build video. With all that said, let's construct our Fire Titan Hammer God. This overpowered Titan build begins with the Pyragale Exotic Gauntlets, which exist solely to modify your two primary abilities in this setup to do significantly increased damage and create literal fire cyclones. The first of these two abilities is our first aspect, Consecration, which in addition to granting two fragment slots, also transforms your fully charged melee ability while sliding into a two-part hammer combo that has a lot of intricacies that you might not know about. The first activation of your melee ability whilst sliding will consume 50% of your melee ability energy and launch your character into the air, scraping the ground and releasing a wave of solar fire that will damage and scorch all enemies in a wave in front of you. Activating your melee ability again shortly after, while airborne, will consume the remaining 50% of your melee ability energy to slam the ground with your hammers, releasing a second, larger wave of fire to deal approximately 10 times the damage of the first wave and cause an ignition on any scorched target that it hits. And with the added benefits from the Pyragale exotic gauntlets, that second wave of fire will also create a small cyclone of fire to roam the battlefield and damage enemies. Consecration also grants you a bonus 25% damage resistance while using either part of the modified melee slam. Finally, Bungie has announced some additional buffs for the Consecration aspect coming in the Sandbox update patch on March 5th that will make this build even better, along with some extra buffs to some of the solar buffs in this build specifically that we will talk about shortly. But before we continue, please do me a favor and consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel if you've learned something new in this build video so far. The second ability that the Pyragale Gauntlets are going to turn up to 11 is our super the Burning Maul, which is transformed by our exotic gauntlets to become a single one-and-done slam that deals 650% increased damage and releases three waves in a cone that track to enemies and each generate a gigantic fire cyclone that tracks and deals massive damage. In addition to the Burning Maul as our super selection, it's important that you understand the rest of our base abilities as well, beginning with the Towering Barricade in the class ability slot to offer some immediate cover and protection as this is a build that will have you in the middle of fights due to the up close and personal
personal nature of consecration. In the melee ability slot, you'll go with the throwing hammer, as although it won't be used often, given that your melee ability energy is typically going to be reserved for consecration activations, it can be nice to have a quick ranged melee option that can be scavenged for full melee ability restoration that can still proc some of the fragments, aspects, and mods that we will talk about later in this build. Finally, for the grenade, it's up to you depending on what type of content you are engaging in, where I recommend a fusion grenade for extra damage and on-level content like dungeons and raids, whereas I would urge you towards a more defensive option in the healing grenade for more dangerous content like legend lost sectors and high difficulty nightfalls. With all of that established, we can move on to our second aspect for this build, Soul Invictus, which upon defeating any scorched enemy or defeating any enemy with a solar ability will spawn a sunspot at the location of their death. Standing inside of a sunspot will grant you the Soul Invictus buff for five seconds, which will simultaneously provide you with a restoration healing buff, as well as an additional 100% bonus base grenade and melee regeneration rate buff. Sunspots will also deal damage and apply scorch to any enemies that happen to pass through them. With our aspects, exotic armor, and base abilities established, we can now look to arm ourselves with four solar fragments to take this build to the next level, beginning with the Ember of Torches to grant the 25% weapon damage buff radiant to yourself and all nearby allies when inflicting powered melee damage, such as hitting an enemy with your throwing hammer or either half of the Consecration combo. In slot number two, you'll want to look to the Ember of Empyrean, which grants an extension to any solar buff you currently possess, such as Radiant and Restoration, anytime you defeat an enemy with solar weapon or ability damage. In the current build of the game, this fragment simply grants a four second increase to all solar buffs for every solar weapon or ability kill, regardless of enemy rank. But along with some other buffs shortly coming to this build on March 5th, the Ember of Empyrean will be slightly tweaked to give significantly more extended time to these buffs when defeating high tier combatants, and will also have its maximum duration for the buffs that it extends upgraded to 15 seconds up from the current 12 seconds. And in addition to that, there is also another buff slash bug fix coming to restoration in that same March 5th patch, fixing the current issue where restoration buff timers would be reset to their initial duration upon reapplying restoration. For example, in the current state of Destiny, if you step into a sunspot to gain restoration for 5 seconds, then kill 2 enemies to extend that duration to 12 seconds through the Ember of Empyrean, and then step into another sunspot, it would reset your restoration timer to the original 5 seconds. It's not something that makes this build bad by any any means, but it is certainly an annoying bug that will be fixed in that March 5th patch, making this build even better than it is today. In fragment slot number three, we will slot in the Ember of Searing to grant melee energy refunds based on enemy rank and generate fire sprites whenever defeating scorched enemies, which thanks to consecration, sunspots, and some of the weapons we will be using for this build is basically going to be every enemy. In the final fragment slot, you'll look to take the Ember of Ashes to increase all scorched stack applications by 50%, ultimately leading to much more damage and ignitions from our sunspots and some of the weapons that we will talk about right now. If it wasn't obvious already, this build is going to excel with solar weapons. And although they are not required by any means, I do have a few recommendations that I know you are going to really like. With all my testing, my absolute favorite combination of perks to run with this build was a solar weapon that could roll with both Pugilist for melee ability energy refunds on weapon kills for more consecration activations, and in 
incandescent to spread scorch on weapon kills to not only generate more sunspots, but to also proc the Ember of Searing more frequently for even more melee energy refunds. The three weapons that I like the most that fit these criteria are the Abyss Defiant Auto Rifle from Crota's End, the Tyranny of Heaven Bow from Last Wish, and my personal favorite, the Zowley's Bane Hand Cannon from King's Fall. And if the first thought that comes to your mind is, Mac, those are all raid weapons, and I don't really raid that much. Don't worry, because I have an LFG channel in my Discord server linked in the description of this video down below, full of some of the most understanding, patient, skilled, and kind-hearted players that you'll find anywhere in the game, who I am sure would be more than happy to run some raids with you. As far as the exotic weapon recommendation for this build goes, it probably surprises no one that the Dragon's Breath exotic rocket launch Launcher is by far and wide one of the best pairings with this setup, thanks to its incredible burst damage and its synergy with the Ember of Ashes to scorch targets even faster for more ignitions and faster automatic weapon reloads. So with your weapons of choice slotted in, it's time to round this build off with the armor mods and stat prioritizations that will ascend your Guardian into Godhood. We begin on the helmet with a copy of Hands On for increased super energy gains on powered melee final blows through throwing hammer and consecration, as well as a harmonic siphon mod for orb of power generation on solar weapon multi kills. Down on the gloves, you'll look to take a copy of heavy handed for orb of power generation on powered melee final blows, as well as two copies of melee kickstart for a significant chunk of melee energy refund on melee energy expenditure. I do want to note, however, that I have one comment about melee kickstart on this build that I will explain in the build usage tutorial section, so be sure to stick around for that. Over on the chest, you'll look to rock charged up to increase your armor charge stack capacity from 3 to 4, as well as any resistance mods of your choosing. Moving to the boots, you'll simply slot in a copy of stacks on stacks to double all instances of armor charge acquisition. And finally on the class item, it's best to take Reaper for orb of power generation on weapon final blows after class ability activation and powerful attraction to scoop up all nearby orbs from that very same class ability activation. Now you'll notice that there are a few open mod slots remaining, which I have left up to your personal preference depending on what types of activities you are running, what heavy weapons you are using, and where you want to prioritize your ancillary ability energy refunds. Personally, I have enjoyed Heavy Finder on the helmet, Outreach on the class item and invigoration and harmonic scavenger on the boots, but it really is up to you what to do with these final mod slots. With stat prioritizations in resilience, discipline, and intellect, all that's left to do is to scroll down to the description for the Destiny Item Manager link that will automatically copy all of this over to your guardian in just one click. And if you want to thank me, hitting those like and subscribe buttons does just that. Now to truly make you a master of this build, I want to move to a brand new segment I'm looking to make standard in my build videos that will talk about exactly how you want to put this build to use for maximum effectiveness when it comes to playstyle, ability rotations, and all those finer details. While I can also tell you about alternate options for things like weapon perk selections and things of that nature. So allow me to give you the final pieces of knowledge to transform you from a talented Solar Consecration Titan into a Fire Cyclone God of War. So to play this build to absolute perfection, the main way that you want to be playing is basically spamming your melee as much as humanly possible. It is your number one ability for this build. It does so much damage and it's just absolutely incredible for dispatching even extremely tanky targets. Uh, as you saw with that rather tanky uh, Centurion. You can do it to these ones as well if they don't fly above me, but does a pretty sizable chunk of damage. Now, if you're in a situation where you use your melee ability and you don't get the entire thing back, it's gonna be based on a couple of factors, primarily how many armor charge stacks you have when you use it, 
as well as how many targets you kill. Because keep in mind, armor charge is going to refund a big chunk of your melee when you use it. And the amount of targets that we kill is going to determine how much melee energy we get back because of the Ember of Searing. If you don't get a lot of your melee back, enough to go ahead and reactivate it again, you'll then just move to getting weapon kills with your incandescent weapon. Because remember, with the Ember of Searing, if we kill targets that we scorch, then we're going to get a big chunk of melee back depending on enemy rank. So right here, as you can see, uh, I've got a little bit of energy I need on it, but when I kill that Phalanx right there, it gives me a sizable chunk since I did it with an incandescent weapon that scorches him. In terms of playing outside of having your melee, something that I like to do quite often when I'm going ahead and killing enemies and fighting stuff is if I'm in an area that's particularly ad dense and I maybe can't get all of the enemies in one sweep of my melee ability, what I like to do is take advantage of my towering barricade to kind of put a wall between myself and the enemies right after I slam to give me a little bit of an escape route right there. So for example, couldn't kill that Shadow Guard Legionary, so I like to throw my barricade down right away um, after I finish my slam. So it makes it a little safer for me to go ahead and step out of the fight. Now, something that I do want to mention is in the mod section, I did say that I had a comment about Melee Kickstart, and I kind of want to go over that now because it takes a bit of an explanation. As you can see from Melee Kickstart, it reads, when your melee energy is fully expended, your armor charge is consumed and you gain melee energy for each armor charge used. Now with this mod there is a bit of anti-synergy in some circumstances with this build because since your melee is a two part where each part consumes 50% and each part sends out a wave of fire that deals damage you'll sometimes end up in a situation where if the first wave of melee energy kills an enemy it'll give you melee energy from killing that enemy thanks to the Ember of Searing because you're killing Scorched targets, which means when you bring down the hammers on the second slam, it won't actually consume your armor charge stacks because it's only removing 50%. And since you've already regenerated some of your melee energy, it takes away the other 50% of the ability and the game says, oh, you didn't fully expend it. So we're not going to go ahead and activate your melee kickstart mods. So the solution for that is if you are in higher end content, that honestly doesn't matter whatsoever because the difference in damage between the first wave of fire and the second wave of fire is so significant that you're pretty much never going to end up in that situation where the first wave that you send out kills an enemy and therefore you don't proc melee kickstart. In those circumstances where you are in on-level content, and remember I recommended fusion grenade for on-level content as opposed to healing grenade for higher end content, I think it can in some circumstances make more sense to swap these two melee kickstart mods out for something like impact induction so your melee damage will give you your grenade back more frequently and a copy of momentum transfer so that when you deal damage with your fusion grenade you go ahead and cycle back in and give yourself some more melee ability energy most of the time the double melee kickstart is going to work perfectly fine because the damage of the first wave is so much less than the damage of the second wave but it is just something i wanted to point out and while we're on the topic of mods i do want to mention that although in the previous section when i laid out the official mods i did recommend invigoration and outreach if you're ever in a situation where you feel like these are a little bit overkill and you feel like they're it's a little bit unnecessary you always have your melee ability completely ready even without having to cast your class ability to proc outreach or without having to pick up orbs to proc invigoration you can optionally sub these out for the grenade based variants like innervation and bomber if you would like again i personally like the melee ones a little bit better but again alternative option for those who maybe are feeling the grenade a little bit more and feel like they're perfectly fine on their melee energy gains. Now, the other main thing I want to talk about with this build is the importance of maintaining your restoration and radiant buffs through the Ember of Empyrean and the best ways to do that. Arguably, the strongest part of any solar build is the ability to permanently have a radiant 25% weapon damage buff and a restoration healing buff just by continuously getting solar ability and weapon kills. As you can see on the left of my screen, Radiant and Restoration for 12 seconds a pop, that's going to increase by 4 seconds for every kill that we get. The only caveat with this that is a little bit annoying is that any time you reactivate Restoration, the main way that you're going to notice that is going to happen is when you step in a sunspot, it will drop your Restoration back down to the initial duration of that acquisition method, in this case, 5 seconds. This is a bug in the game that is not supposed to happen. Uh, standing in the sunspot, should instead just keep me 
at 12 seconds of restoration or increase the duration as opposed to drop me back down to the initial timer. And this is a bug that is confirmed to be fixed coming in the March 5th patch being added to the game where the Ember of Empyrean is also actually getting a couple of other buffs. Most notably, these maximum timers are going to be able to be extendable up to 15 seconds as opposed to the current 12. The one upside is that although you do have to deal with two weeks of that very inconvenient bug, the nice thing about sunspots is that standing in them is of course going to give you that Soul Invictus buff, which will increase your grenade regeneration by 100% while you're in possession of the Soul Invictus buff. So even though your rest Restoration is going to get cut short in some circumstances, since standing in a sunspot is going to drop whatever timer you have of it back down to five seconds. Standing in those sunspots and getting Soul Invictus from the sunspots is going to have you uh, get your healing grenade back much more frequently, which is going to allow you to have yet another way to reacquire restoration uh, in those circumstances where you stand in the sunspot and you lose it. So, for example, right here, got the healing grenade back. You'll get it back super quickly thanks to those sunspots. One more hammer, boom. So satisfying. Final thing I want to talk about is alternate weapon options. The first of these is the BXR Battler, a pulse rifle. It's not particularly incredible in higher end content, but it is a fun to use pulse rifle, especially if you're a Halo player that can also roll Pugilist and Incandescent. We've also got the Trusty from Deepstone Crypt, another raid weapon if you want to go the Scout Rifle route. Again, Pugilist and Incandescent, two best perks for this build. The Amit, which is an extremely easy to obtain craftable auto rifle, has Pugilist and Incandescent available. However, they are on the same perk column, so you can't run both of them at the same time. So you could do something like stats for all or surplus or triple tap and then run one or the either between pugilist or incandescent. Personally, I like incandescent a little bit better because one, it just makes it easier to scorch a bunch of enemies. And in the long run, I think you actually end up getting more melee energy than you would with pugilist because although pugilist directly gives you melee ability energy on kill, since we're running the Ember of Searing, which gives melee energy when defeating scorched targets, running incandescent basically makes it so that you do a little bit better in that regard. We've also got No Survivors, the submachine gun from Ghosts of the Deep, the dungeon. Again, another example of a weapon that has Pugilist and Incandescent, but in the same column. Again, probably urge you towards Incandescent, although Pugilist would not be a bad option. And in this first perk column, I think Demolitionist would be an absolutely fantastic option to go ahead and rock and roll with here. Final option is the Trust Hand Cannon, another pretty easy to obtain weapon that has a ridiculous amount of different roles. The one I like here the most is probably Rapid Hit here in the first column, along with, like I said, Incandescent here in the second column, or of course, also has Pugilist on this weapon if you end up with that instead. And that is everything that you need to know about the Solar Pyragale Consecration Titan. Be sure to check out Raid Shadow Legends through the QR code on screen or in the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, have a great day.